All right, we're back working on our bears. I got another one finished this week that I was playing around on the side while, I, while I'm working on one. I'll allow anybody to record if you ask. While I'm working on one, this is the one we were working on, I worked on one off on the side because I did not want to... I did not want to take the one we were working on and stop at a point and then go ahead and continue carving on that. I wanted you to see the whole process from start to finish, and hopefully that's what it'll do. But I finished this one because this is the one I was carving alongside it. So I carved this one and put him on a small base. I began routing the edges of my, of my bases just to give it a little more, little more looks. He has a book in his hand. I didn't put a title on the book because I could always... I can always put one on there as 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 needed, but I didn't do that. So anyway, I'm I, I'm gonna have to start selling some of these because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven finished ones, and I got about one, two, about five more over here, and then I got some some moose as well. So anyway, uh, we'll see what uh, what we what we come up with today. So here's where we here's where we left off. These cameras here. Here's where we left off, and you can see where we started doing. We finished. We've got the book kind of finished. You can see where we've got the legs kind of finished. Not quite the back. Not even the back of the legs. And we've got a really big belly hanging over here on him that we could we could take a lot out of that too. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. And we're gonna continue carving. Hopefully I haven't seen Peter, I saw yours. You showed me yours and I think you had you said you had a video on it that I saw as well on YouTube. So that was nice to see. Yours was yours was a little bit different. You you had you had shelves built in and I just had plain shells that I would burn in the book so it looks it looks it's a relief so it looks like the the, the books on the in the book I can get book. it if you want yeah just show it while I get my knives out if you don't mind hey Vaughn glad you could join us You can see it. Ever. That looks nice. I like it. Will you build me one? <laughs> it's too expensive to ship. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> You'll pay it, huh? I'll pay it. All right. We left off, we had done the, his left arm. We had done his left arm, and now we're going to work on the right. Started it a little bit, but didn't do a lot. Is that close enough to see? Do I need to back off a little bit? Anybody? Nobody cares? It looks fun. Okay. So we started off with that arm cut in here. We got a, a gouge cut out right here. We got the elbow back here in the arm. What we're going to do now, I'm going to draw, it's already in there, so I'm, I don't need to draw that. I want to I want to start trimming right around in here. And I'm going to really take this gut down, This the gut on this bear. I realize, you know, they're fat and they, you know, big bellies, but whatever. I want to make him look a little more, I don't know, human, I guess, kind of human. So I've got my fishtail gouge, uh, drake, three-eighths, and I'm just going to carve... Got to remember to stay right up there where I can, where you can see what I'm doing. I'm just carving right above that arm, and I'm just trying to trim some of that wood down because I don't need all that wood in there. I need a little bit out here rounded for a pocket, and I need to bring the sleeve up to up to where that pocket is tucked in, and then I need to shape the arm. But anyway, I've got a better tool than what I'm using for that, and I think it's this one right here. I'm going to use a gouge. This is a flex cut. Flex cut's got uh, tools on sale. At least our woodcraft does. Has the uh, tools on sale for 20% off if anybody wants them. I know some people don't like flex cut. I like 
using some of them because they are just as their name says it's flexible and so you can carve and it, that 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 blade will bend and so for do you, beginners, know how, do you know how long that sale is going to be on february okay thank you it should be on so i know i know our local well okay I'm, I'm assuming the flyer goes out for every woodcraft store i know our store uh, they, they, can they, they follow the put my pin back up they put the, they put when they put a sale on i thought it was nationwide so um I haven't I haven't double checked that because I don't really go to flex cut anywhere. Well, I've got an email about it, so I think it is nationwide. Yeah. So anyway, they're, they you know their stuff is good, and I I promote them heavily with my beginning class because they're good tools, and they're even good to learn on how to sharpen because you didn't pay a lot of money for them. You're not spending fifty sixty dollars on a, on, a, on a on a Drake or a Helvy. You know, for twenty, thirty dollars, you get a you get the tools you need, and, and they last quite a while if you take care of them. So, even if you need to learn how to sharpen, you can they can learn how to sharpen. They're not real thick, and so it's easy to to get that ability, that practice with 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 sharpening tools. I'm going to switch to a knife in here because I find myself getting way down here. And I'm getting farther away from you, away from the camera. So all I'm doing is just shaping the left chest over here. That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to add a lot of details yet. Those will come once I get r the rough shape of it. But I'm trying to bring that belly down a little bit. I'm trying to bring this down here to match a little bit so I don't have this lip hanging out. You see that lip hanging there? I don't want that lip, so I'm just trying to nudge back to it. I'll leave enough room in here to put whatever we want, whether it's a sweater, a jacket. I could even, we had a librarian in, our, in my old school that was a big time hippie. So he always wore tie dye, tie dye and flip flops. So, you know, the old, the days of the school librarian being this staid person with the suit and tie or hair up in a bun or whatever, I think that's gone by the wayside. So anyway. I'm going to switch back to my fishtail gouge and I'm going to just take that big, big piece right there. Still out of the camera. My apologies. Let me get that right up under there so I can see where I'm at. Anyway, that's where we're at. I'm going to, let me do, let me do a thing. I think, I think I'm a little bit too close. So let me move this up a little bit. That looks like it'll be enough for me to keep my fingers out of, the, out of the way and in the way of where you want to look. So that way you can see the whole bear when I'm carving on it rather, rather than just that much. <laughs> Doesn't help you to see just that little bit. Remember, if you got something to say, put it in the chat. I'll get to it as quick as I can. I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing right here so I forget where I'm at and what I'm doing. But uh, I'll try to pay attention to the chat for anybody coming in. All right, it's going to take that fishtail gouge. I like these fishtail gouges. I don't know if you got one, but it takes the place of a, of a of a knife, and it's a lot more comfortable than sometimes holding that, that knife and getting it into a certain angle. So being able to just come in here with a fishtail gouge and take off things, it allows me a lot of, lot of room to be flexible. And I can come at it from a lot of different ways, whereas sometimes with a knife, there's only one way to come at it with that knife, and you just gotta get in and get after it. So I'm taking a little bit of that, little bit of that belly out. Still got, still got some of it, but we'll work on it a little bit later because when I come in here and draw in the in the jacket, that'll give me some room to to place that in. So I've got the one draw for the jacket on his left, our right. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna try to match the other one. So here's the other side, about right here, coming down, and I'm gonna match up with the jacket down there. Okay. Now, 
we're still flexible enough to where we can do just about anything we want. We could actually have this jacket come back over here, be tucked under his arm so that he's got this hand not in his jacket pocket, but in his pants pocket. Okay, I've got a deep cut in there. I'd have to negotiate. Not a big deal. I, I really want to keep it just, you know, hands in the pocket of his jacket. So I'm going to leave that there, which means my old lines here are going to be okay. Now, if you know how men's jackets are, are, are cut, they have a, a, a flap here and a zigzag out there. I don't know what that is, what that's called. It's how it's tailored. And then you, you bring that back in here. And there's the, the lapel. Probably made that oversized, but I wanted you to be able to see it. Okay, you got that, that, and then it goes around the neck. And I bring I usually bring those just straight up here and then make them make them die back here. I don't really I don't really want to follow a lapel all the way back here, the collar. I just make it die somewhere in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Figure out where that other spot was. There's a V in there. This is going to come around and match so the lapel matches. And then that V goes back behind the neck. And like I said, I just want it to get it right on this crooked wood. And then that puts his jacket in there. And you can do whatever you want. He's got, let me look at some of the possibilities. Here we've got one that lost my guy. Here's one guy with the, oh, there he is. I've been <laughs> looking right at him. Here's the one I just finished. He's got a sweater on. Book under his arm. This guy is just a suit and tie. Looks like, a, you know, one of the men in black. This fellow with a bow tie. Another one with just a tie. Uh, I think these are real simple. He's got another bow tie on. And another one here. We'll go stop there. That's enough. So you get an idea of what the possibilities are on what you want to add to your bear. So I'm giving him a jacket. I don't want this lapel to be that thick right there. I want it to, to be thinner. So I'm going to draw it thinner a little bit. Can't see my hand, but I'm just making it thinner so that that lapel is not this great big honking thing that doesn't doesn't belong there. And so I know that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a jacket on him. And so I can go ahead and V-tool all of that because all of that is outside of the torso here. So if I'm going to put that out here, I can go ahead and do that with a with a small V. I don't use a big V on here. This is a, I don't know what number it is. It's stamped it. It says 47. So a 47 Stubai, one of those Stubais. I, we have a dealer here in town that gets them directly from Chris Willick up at, lost the name of the place now, Whittling Shack. So we get them for between 30 and $35. And I think Chris sells them for about 35 bucks. So either way, these are these are some good tools. Just know that when you when you buy them, every tool you have to sharpen, you have to hone it. At the very least, you have to hone it. These are ones where they're they're thicker metal. It's harder sometimes to get that bevel perfectly right, and the worst ones to get it on any tool is a V tool. Right? Am I am I right? Those are the ones that's really hard to keep that that very middle piece even. Because it'll dip down below the edge of it. It'll still cut, but it looks ugly when you when you when you when you get it down below. And sometimes, depending on how far how far down below you get it, it won't cut. So just be careful that these are a little more not finicky. They're a little more precision. So they're precision metal, and it's good stuff. And they come in 900 different sizes. So get the little. Get the little sheet that Chris sends out to you. I think I got one back here. Yeah, maybe I don't. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell Chris's stuff for him. He can sell that himself. But I'm just telling you what I use and, and who you can get them from if you decide to go get those. 
I like Chris. He and I hit it, hit it off up at uh, Ellensburg this year, and we uh, maintain that friendship. So, anyway, what I've done is I've come back in here with this small V tool, and separated out a jacket. Now I'm going to separate the lapel, so I'm going to go straight up into it. Follow that line. I like drawing in black so that way you can see what I'm doing. Right up to there, I made a little, little bit of overmark. I can cut out a little bit later. I'm going to take out that piece right there. I'm going to take out this piece going from here to the back of the neck. So start right there at that point. I'll run some ideas by you at the end of the end of the end of the class, end of the meeting tonight. And I guess it's not tonight for many of you. Today. And we'll see if we can narrow down a few. I mean, understand that it's still my my meeting and I want to do some things that I like. So if you tell me oh, let's do a barroom girl, well maybe not. My wife might draw the draw the shades on that one. But we'll we'll talk about projects that we can do. I, I was I mentioned some time ago I wanted to do the Swedish Chef off of the Muppets, and uh, I see that in the today in the issue of Wood Carving Illustrated just came out. There's a Swedish Chef, a bottle stopper. I was going to do it as a bottle stopper. There's a Swedish Chef as a bottle shop stopper. Are these people in my head and finding out the ideas that I want to do and beating me to it? Um, I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll figure out whether. What we want to do all right i've got those cut in now what i'm going to do is come back with a knife and i don't need a real long honking knife so i'm going to get a shorter one i like this little short i like a, i like a little short stiff knife sometimes because it gets allows me to get in where i need, need to go it's pointed at the end it's big enough from up here to make a big cut from from sharp to back and it's sturdy enough to last long enough so that you know i don't have to hone it every every 12 minutes all right i'm going to go right in those plunge right into those those marks that I made, this is the outside edge of his right lapel. I make a stop cut and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, this is the inside lapel. Don't do the, don't do the very inside one. This is the one that's, I guess, outside, the outside part of that lapel. And I'm undercutting it over here. I want to do the same thing. And all I'm doing is taking off enough of a sliver to look like there's a shadow back in there. Not sure if you can see that, but I want to show there's a shadow back up under that lapel because it makes it look like it goes all the way under there farther than it than I really cut. Cut out that V notch here. I'm just going to chip away that area underneath that underneath that that corner out lapel. I got it upside down, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then I'll bring it up to this. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't stopped cutting here for the lapel going around and I still got that back piece right there. So I'll bring that up a little bit more. Just take that shoulder right up under that lapel because that's usually about where it lies on the head. So I'm, I'm taking out that part right there. And while I'm at it, while I'm in there in that same spot, got the knife in my hand, I want it around this back corner. I had left it high and dry the last time we were here, and I wanted to come back and trim that off. All I'm doing is just trimming it around. Going up to the head where that where that collar was. So carving up here at the head, trimming around. I just got to finishing this right here. Shape that back arm like I did that other side. Just give it a little bit of shape. It's, it's really more of just giving it the impression because you don't, you're not carving the exact thing. I was watching a British show just earlier today and they were doing these landscape portraits and they were showing a picture of one of the artists had done and it was just thousands and thousands of little dots of, of leaves and for me if i'm I, i'm not a landscape painter 
I do I do a little bit, but not not a lot. For me, the most boring thing would be sitting there painting leaves. And I think it's the same way with I, I got friends that do that do birds, and they'll sit there for hours with their wood burners and and the little stones and carving in every little fletching. And, and to me, you know. I'm sorry. I've done a few birds. They've mostly been comfort birds. I give them out as, as gifts or I put them on a walking stick like a, you know, hiking stick. You got a bird on it. And I think it's a neat little thing to do. But if you ask me to sit there and carve feathers for hours, I better have a stiff drink before, during, and after because I'm going to be just uh, not going to enjoy it very much. Not Nothing against my bird carving friends they do some wonderful work i just know i don't have the patience to do that and i'd have you know maybe five fletchings on there and then good enough to paint the rest in or something like that but just me i don't have the patience for that okay and the bob uh ross manner couldn't hear you and the bob ross manner oh and the bob ross yeah a couple of big birds up here i got a tree that says ever made mistakes in life and the next line says make them birds and then the sh then you see birds on there. Yep, they're birds. So they're just just a just a little swoop like that for a bird, and it works. I was watching Bob Ross just the other day. A little he had a pea pod in his pocket, a little little baby squirrel. Yeah. My wife and I did a show last year, and across the across the the walkway from us was a lady who did landscape painting and, and it wasn't bad you know it was it's not it's not Rembrandt quality or whatever but she found out that I used to do a little bit of painting before I got into carving and she goes oh there's a there's painters I really like who do you like and I said Jerry Arnell and, and Bob Ross and she, she literally turned her nose up at me and says I don't like Bob Ross and walked away I thought well I didn't make fun of who you liked you know why are you making fun of who I like it's just Art speaks to people in different ways, and there ain't no sense in, in, in making fun of my artistic guide or muse or whatever you want to call it, but hey, I think he's a fantastic painter. I think he's a very good painter, and I, you know, before him, there was a guy named Walter Foster that, that did a lot of painting, and, and Bob Ross learned from him. I think it was Walter Foster. And when he another left, Pete Alexander. Yeah, there was an, yeah another guy named Alexander. I don't know his first name, but anyway, they that guy got mad because he taught Bob how to do things, and then went off and did his own thing. It's like if any of my students become famous or, or good at what they're doing, hey, I'm all for it. I'm I am 100 behind them. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna gripe at them. Um, find a place to sell them or find a place to do whatever. I think there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that at all. All right. We're working on shaping this arm. I'm just bringing down the elbows because he had a really, really big pointed elbow sticking out there. Like he's going to elbow somebody behind him in line or whatever. Don't, don't step in front of him in the chow hall line. But anyway, I'm just carving away over here doing the thing I said I was going to do. We're going to carve the, carve the arms. We've already carved this one and got all the details on it. I'm going to carve a few details on this one. It's real flat, flat plane. I got a friend of mine in the club that started doing carving and he discovered flat plane and boy, he's just going to town on it. So you were in the class with him, Peter, Michael uh, Chamberlain. Yeah. He's uh, really gotten into doing a lot of flat plane carving. So the ladies that he did and the few things that he's done for us he's really really gotten into it you know and everybody gets their own style mine's just redneck rustic i guess and would be about a good way to call it i ain't trying to be anybody that's going to be on a new york fashion art magazine or anything i'm just going to carve for me and make it good and enjoy it and Somebody else wants to learn from me or with me or teach me, I'm listening. I'm with you. Now, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do poetry, but uh, I'm going to have a little bit of fun. All right. I think that arm is looking pretty good. We haven't done anything about where the sleeve is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've got, I've got the edge of the pocket here, and I've got the sleeve, the, 
cuff right here. So I'm just going to draw a straight line across. That's the pocket in the jacket right there. Here's the other line right below that. That's for the cuff. See that? I can't see that very well. Right there. So I've got a line right here for the back of the cuffs and the front separating the pocket. Now I've got to separate those two because I know they're not all on the same plane. So in front of the sleeve, between the sleeve and the top of the pocket, I'm going to take a little divot out right there so that it looks like it's separated. I'm going to come under here under the under the under the sleeve, the top of the sleeve. I'm going to make an incision inside going plunging down in there. I'm going to come back out here on the top and I'm going to trim that off. What that's going to do is separate the sleeve from the jacket here. So now you can tell there's two planes. There's this plane here, crook of the arm, and there's the plane up here. Here's the pocket. And I want to round just around the edges of it off so it looks like a pocket. And down here as well, I want to just keep that bulge right here because it shows that he's got his hand in his pocket. Now I'll only take a little bit off to take off those saw marks. I want to make a cut right here at the back of the arm, bottom of the arm, and do the same thing that I did here. I'm going to come back over here. I usually turn it 180 degrees, cut out that sliver, get the little booger I left in there. Okay, looking like where I want to go, I want to make a little another cut right here on top of that. See, so it's right on top. Sorry, you can't see that. Right on top of that sleeve, I want to make a cut right there and connect those cuts. And this is the jacket, and this is the shirt. So I want to, I want to trim a little bit of that shirt off right there, that cuff of the shirt. Trim it down a little bit so that it's a little bit lower than the jacket. So it's lower between the jacket and the pocket. Don't have a flap on the pocket. But what I did, if you can see that, what I did was narrow this down a little bit here. Now I'm going to take a little bit more off right there. That'll make that sleeve look like it. And I'm going to do the same thing right up here, just a little bit. So right up the top of that sleeve, I'm going to go right across the top of it with a cut and an angle. Come in here and snip it off there. And take it out here. It shorten it, it made that sleeve just a little bit shorter than the jacket. It would if I do this part right there. So now we trimmed up that jacket sleeve right there. I'm going to take off this back here, and it narrows it down from the from the from the elbow here. It narrows it down to a smaller piece, so that it looks like it tucks in and everything fits like it's supposed to. And then take that little sliver out right there underneath the sleeve. And we've got a sleeve. When we talk about carving, a lot of things we talk about is our details. A lot of the details that people look at the carving, they say, oh, that looks so cute. People don't realize there are a lot of details on the carving. Sometimes you'll see them. Sometimes they stand right out. Other times you got to look for them. For instance, would you notice it if he had buttons here. If I just painted those in, would you notice that he had buttons at the end of his shirt? Probably not, unless it's a dis unless it is a distinct enough color. If that was a white shirt and a black button, you'd see it. But those are the little details that people love when they finally discover your carving. When they finally realize and they start looking at it, they realize, oh, that's cute. That, that, that looks good. Well, it doesn't look good unless you put them in there. So now we're going to take off these saw marks and I'm just going to, I've got a flat plane thing going on. I've got one big one here, one big one here, a couple big ones here. So I try to keep the arms to where they're kind of like that. So it doesn't add too much detail, but I've got quite a bit of them over here that I'm going to finish with. These. I could still make this flat plane if I want to take all those ridges off. I don't necessarily want to. So I'm just going to take these saw marks off first. Come in here with a big gouge. I'm gonna do with that big gouge I pulled out. I'll put it back. 
That's not what I wanted to do. All right. And so now I'm going to do some detail on here. Now, I don't know how much you pay attention to things like um, folds and fabric and things like that and how everything flows, but you've got to look at the contact points. This is a contact point because when you put your elbow out, it strains the fabric. You will not find folds on the elbow because you're straining against it. You will find folds going away. Same thing with the shoulder. You're going to find folds right in here because you get some wrinkles right in here at the top of the shoulder. So the wrinkles don't have to be much, but I'm going to put just a couple of them in that arm right in that shoulder. Just a couple of wrinkles. You can put as many. Well, don't put a lot. You don't need a lot in there. You just need a few to make it look like the fabric is being stretched away from a certain point. And then you've got to figure out where it's going to flow. Most of it's going to flow this way and that way. So if I get that in there, all I'm doing is I'm going to flow away from the contact point up at the shoulder. That's where the wrinkles flow from. So I want them going that way. And you don't need a lot of wrinkles. Don't, don't think you've got to put a whole bunch. The, the exception would be someone who's got their pants tucked into their boots. You need, you need a number of wrinkles there. I'll show a couple things that I've finished last few days and get your opinion on them but uh, I'll, I'll be, hopefully be able to point out a few things wrap those around the sleeve because they don't they don't go around and connect like a u but they do go around and connect because you only got two sides here and uh, you got three not four so you just make them wrap around the arm and then try not to have really really sharp points and if you do put um Put pads on the back of the elbow. Make them look like they're um, patches. You ever seen those old, uh, those, those the hippie professors at Berkeley in the 60s? They always wear those tweed jackets with corduroy pads on their sleeves. And I don't say always, but it seemed like a lot of them did. Put a few more of those wrinkles on the front. That arm looks pretty good. I mean, there's some cleanup there we need to do, but that arm, arm looks pretty good. Now, that's the same exact process that we will do over on the other side. Same thing we'll do over here. We've got the V tool cut in, so I'm going to go to the bottom of the lapel, the inside bottom of the lapel, outside, sorry, and go up to that corner, up to that tip, turn my knife in, turn my knife back out, all around to the back of the head and then cut up to that line so go from go from right to left to that line up to it and that undercuts the lapel sticking out of his out of the jacket right there okay make it as deep as you want just be careful how deep you go making that cut there cut up to it making this cut here cut up to it and then I've already made this cut right here so I'm just going to follow that line and under underscore that sliver of wood and take it out so that it looks like there's a shadow under that under that lapel okay come back and clean up a little bit so we can see what we did because if I cover it in black stuff then we can't see it very well I'm doing is cleaning up a little bit of these these marks that I've got all over the place. I used to draw a lot with pencil, and I still do. And I hear a lot of people complain about pencil leaving all kinds of stuff all over their all over their wood. And I'm going well. Carve faster before it gets the chance to settle in. Wash your gloves, and you know as soon as you get that on there, get it off as quick as you can because it'll kind of wants to soak in. All right. We haven't made a decision about what we're going to do, so let's work on that head because we got the lapel coming up to the collar, coming up to the head. So we want to take some of that down. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of scoop it like this so that it has a an outside high and an inside high. If you ever seen men's collars, 
they kind of have a have a, a rounded feature to them. So especially if they're buttoned down, uh, not the jacket, but to the shirts. So we're just trying to trim that lapel right around the head. Am I going too fast? I need to slow down and show you what I did, or you got y'all y'all clear with what I what I'm doing? Okay, I'm just going around and separating the head from the body. I don't need to have much there, and, and you know, you could argue, well, I don't show the collar. Well, you know what? It's a furry bear. He got a lot of fur hiding that collar, so we're going to call it good at that. So this is where I'm at. That's where we're at so far. We've been working on this arm over here. We had this one done with the book under it. We've been working on this one over here, trying to make it kind of look like the other one with some wrinkles and the elbow sticking out. It's got a book on this side, but not on this side. We've trimmed up the front of the front of the jacket. And so now we've got to make some decisions. The head will leave until the last and we'll worry about the feet a little bit later. We want to do some more to it. What do we want to do with that jacket? Do we want a straight jacket with you know nothing real fancy on it? Do we want to have him with a sweater? Do we want a vest? Do we want whatever? Let me take a minute. I'm going to clean off this stuff that I've got on there that I've marked it up with. And that way it'll get us a clean slate to look at. So I'm going to take off this the center line. Find myself still using center lines when I do a carving, even though I know what I'm doing, and I've done so many of, of this or that of that I'm working on. I still draw a center line because it, I want to. I want to sometimes stretch the wood. By stretching the wood, I don't mean grabbing it and pulling it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm stretching what the wood is. I got a series of carvings I want to do if I can ever find the time is a series of things made out of wood and it's called what wood wants to be so i make some things out of wood because that's what the wood really wants to be instead of what you were going to use it for so talking about stretching the stretching the face let me let me go grab a couple carvings i left them in the kitchen i'll grab them in a second Here's a carving I rough out I picked up from Ryan Olson um, when I was up at Ellensburg. And I like this little guy, but when I got into him, I realized the wood, I'm going to send the point with, the wood from this hand to this hand was solid right here. So you didn't have a bottom of the head, it just the wood came all the way down here. So you had to try to figure out what to do with it, and I took some of it out and was able to get a hand out of there. But the collar, you won't be able to see it there behind the shotgun, but the collar didn't connect. The collar right here in the middle didn't connect with that other side over there. So this side was fine, this side being tucked behind all that wood was hard. And then it didn't have a chin, so I stuck him with a great big mustache. But you see, he doesn't have much of a chin there. He's just kind of, kind of goofy looking. Anyway, when I talk about stretching, I got this gnome finished, and if you'll notice, he's looking this way. Sorry, looking this way. His eyes are going, going from here over to there. Looking, looking this way. Look, backwards. Looking this way, and if you'll notice that pulls his, this cheek up is a little bit bigger than the other one. And his mouth is skewed off to the side as well. So doing a symmetrical line, and I want to follow symmetry, everything should be about the same. But I can stretch that a little bit and put things over. You see a little bit of his lip pick, poking out of there because it's not straight up and down. Do I, do I have to make everything straight up and down? I do not. 
can I stretch it a little bit where from he's looking from from this eye here looking from this eye here over there and his mouth is just a little bit pulled over here and his cheeks are just a little bit pulled over a little bit big pulled over there too so it just depends on what you're trying to do you can be as creative and 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 do a lot of things this particular carving had the hand too small to really put a, a stick in there you know you, you imagine you imagine gnomes with with sticks in their hands you know because they walk around with them but he has only enough for one of those what do they call them shillelaghs shillelaghs the welsh or the irish thing whatever they the head knocker whatever they carry around with them but i like this one because i just think he, his, his, his facial expression turned out well his face you know he's got a, he's kind of like talking out of the corner of his mouth there so i like the way that turned out but you can stretch these things as much as you want i, I don't know how many i was the recipient of probably 30 rough outs when uh, a carving friend of mine got out of carving and he hated giving it up but i, I got them and a lot of them are still sitting down the garage but a lot of them i've taken them and made them completely something completely different from what they started out as um, I did one where the guy was a, well, you know what a wash tub is, right? You, you heard a wash tub band, so they got the ding, 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 the string and the stick. That's what it, that's what the carving was. It was supposed to be that. Well, I made it to where the guy's got his foot on a log. So that foot that was raised on the, on the wash tub, I made it like it was on a log. And then this hand out here had a meat cleaver and this hand had a roadkill raccoon. And so it was the, the, the title of it was dinner, anyone. But I took it completely away from what it was supposed to be, or what it was intended to be. It was intended to be a wash tub player in, in a in a in a band, and I made it. Guy cooking around the fire with the roadkill. Be creative. Be as creative as you want to be because it's your carving, and and no one should tell you that you did that wrong or you shouldn't do that or whatever. All right, we're back to this bear, and I you know I can see him. He's starting to get done once we get the final details in. I don't know what those are. I don't know what I don't know what we're gonna put him into. So let's. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here for a little bit because I see little stuff like this neck under here needs cleaning up. It's got a spare piece of wood under there. This collar really, I said I was giving give it a scooping effect, but I didn't get enough of it. So I'm gonna come back with a gouge, and I'm just gonna pull that through it. So that it looks like that collar has a little bit of a swoop to it right there and i would do the same thing over here i'm only doing that on the top top of the collar lapel i'm not doing it on the on the bottom i don't care about that okay we haven't done much with the back i'll take a few minutes to kind of trim that up a little bit i'm just trying there's there's a hump right here and a hump right here i don't mind the hump down here i do mind the hump up here now you argue that bears have humps, yeah. A grizzly has a really pronounced hump. One of the ways you can identify a grizzly from a black bear, brown bear, whatever. Hopefully you aren't whole, close enough to have to try to identify which one is trying to eat you. But if you're one of those ignorant people that uh, go to the Smokies or go to Yellowstone or the Tetons, Oh, look at the pretty bear. Let's pet him. And uh, you end up being dinner for the, that night for that for that bear. I saw one just the other day where this bear in Alaska was sitting along the river just eating eating fish that the people had caught. So they had caught and they'd been drinking beer. They had the fish laying there with them and they were um, taking a break from fishing. This bear moseys up, smells their fish, and it's laying right on the bank starts eating on it. Instead of getting out in the next county... <laughs> these people proceeded to creep closer and closer and closer to this bear one of them actually touched it on the flank well if it wasn't awake by then it was it, before it was by then it twirled on that guy so fast i thought he was going to run out of his britches anyway lucky you know, lucky story nobody got hurt but about that time he was you know fishing game walking up saying you know get away from the bear leave the bear alone you know it's his his home his place whatever and you just go it reminds me of that I was saying I don't think I don't think people in this world are 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 oh there's a, there's a world full of 
a lot of smart people, but they're vastly outnumbered by, by the dummies. And I think those people trying to pet a moose or cuddle a bear or something that would fall into that latter category. Just saying. In the West, we have, you know, we have bigger predators for the most part than, than the Eastern cities do, the Eastern counties. Just the other day, we had, they had to kill a cougar who was running loose in town here because they come right out of the foothills and there's nothing to stop them. There's no fences or no big things of trees or whatever. They just come waltzing right into town. All right. We've got him where we want him. I'm still not sure what I want to do with that torso, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a couple of minutes, more minutes, and I just want to turn that. Not sure whose dog is barking, but uh, mine. I didn't know whose dog was barking. I was looking for the mute button here. <laughs> I don't know if there's a mute button for the dog, is there? I I shall mute myself. Well, I love dogs as much as the next person, but uh, if they're hungry, I guess just feed them and move on. I don't know. There's a reason we don't have a dog. I'm I'm at the point now where I we don't have a really big yard. It's real small. I'm way off the camera. Sorry. We don't have a real big yard, and so letting a dog out to walk in the yard wouldn't do him any good because he'd run 12, 15 feet, and that'd be about all he could run. Up oh, up against the fence. So. And I'm, I'm getting lazier as I get old. I don't want to take it out three times and watch it poop somewhere and then clean it up. So I love dogs. I just haven't had one in a while and kind of like the idea of not having to worry about them. Every once in a while, we got to take care of my daughter's cats. She's got two cats. One of them's only got three legs and has got every health problem in the world, I think. Bless its heart, because you know, an animal don't want to live that way, but it's not. It's it was a hand me down cat, a giveaway cat, and she couldn't see it get destroyed, so she took it in. And it has been uh, sick a lot since then, but bless its heart, right, Tommy? Bless its heart. We just recently had to put our other dog down. It was, it's not fun. It's easier not to have them than to have to do that. Right. Yeah. And get emotional about that kind of thing. And I, you know, we've, we've had to put a couple of animals down since we've been here. And just not, um, not what you wake up wanting to do in the morning, but you know, if you have to, it's time for the animal to, to be taken care of and so that it doesn't suffer anymore. Unfortunately. All right, I'm just taking out a few things here to make this jacket stick out a little bit more above the above the pants, which I haven't even started on. Just trying to trim it down. And I didn't trim a lot down. I didn't get much off of there. I don't really care how much I'm going to take off of there because everything else is going to fit in here. I was just trying to get over toward the edge of the lapels the inside edge toward the shirt of the jacket. Follow that stock cut all the way around. Make it fairly deep in there because we want to give it the effect, the idea of rounding. What we don't want is a flat bear, flat bear, flat bear. We want the whole thing to be rounded. So that's why I call it carving in the round. So I made the cut with my knife in that groove. I'm going to come in here and use my fishtail gouge to separate out and take out some of that wood so that the jacket sticks out farther than the, than the pants and the, sh and the sh shirt, sweater, vest, whatever we're going to put on him. Two o'clock. Hard to believe we've been out this for an hour. Okay. A little bit more out of here. Round it over to there. Okay. All right. Got him rounded out a little bit. Got a little bit of stuff going on. A lot of cleanup still to do. Sit here and piddle play and putter for a long time on, on all of this stuff. All right. 
Well, I know he's going to need a belt, so let's at least put a belt in there. This is the problem when you do eight or ten of a thing, trying to keep them all different. My, uh, my, one of the things I really don't enjoy is having, you know, 20 things laying out here to, to paint and then having to make them all different. If they're all Santa Claus, that's one thing. Uh, snowmen, whatever, but if they're gnomes, cowboys, whatever, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that they're... They're not just carbon copies of each other. I, I haven't been able to be successful at being able to able to make them all look the same. So since I don't make them all look the same, I kind of make, try to make them look different. So. All right. Put a belt in there somewhere about in the middle above his or about where his right about where his hands are. Somewhere where his hands are right here. We'll put a belt there. Make the belt go down here a little bit more. Alright. Somebody mute themselves. Thank you. So we're going to give him a, he's dressed up, so he doesn't want a big, huge, you know, cowboy belt buckle. But I'll just give him a little, little belt, slightly, a little belt buckle, slightly smaller, slightly larger than the belt. So this is the belt here. And this is the belt buckle. It's going to go just slightly above and slightly below. I don't have to get too fancy with this, but I'm going to cut in the, the belt buckle first. Both sides. Cross. Make sure you do that just a little bit bigger than the belt. So you can see the, the belt buckle is going around and it's, it's bigger on top and bottom than on the sides. So I want to come across here, make that belt. Feel free to put a belt loop in there if you want that additional detail. I don't think it. I don't think it needs it, but it wouldn't go bad if you did it. So now we got a belt. Simple as that. Same process you can use on just about any other thing you're using as far as belts. I want to go separate it, so I'm going to go underneath. Stop cut over to the belt buckle. And then right along the side of it. And then I'm going to lay my knife fairly flat. And I just want to take off a little. I'm going to ease up here a little bit. Take off that belt buckle. Take off that edge right there. Do it on the top. Stop cut across. Stop cut up the side of it. Come back in here and just trim that off. Just make it look like that belt buckle belt sticking above the shirt, the, the pants. Same here, same here, here. I like to give my belts a little bit of texture to them, a little bit of shape to them. So I would take a, a, a gouge a little smaller than that one. And I'm just going to go along the side of the belt. And I'm just going to make it to where it has a, 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 a little bit of characteristic to it. I don't want it to be just flat. I do it that way and I can give it a little bit of a, a, little bit of a structure to that belt. Again, got a lot of cleanup, but that's not a big deal. One cleanup right there by the belt on the, his right side. I'll take that out a little bit because it's too much. Okay, do it again on the other side. All I'm doing is trimming where that belt meets the jacket so I can tuck that jacket and the belt under the jacket and it doesn't stick out there real. 
prominently. All right. I don't know if you ever do shirts, but men's shirts basically have a W. Some call it an M, depending on which way you're looking at it. But the W for the collar is basically like that. And so because I don't worry too much about what's back in here, that that collar is going to die right in there, right here. So it's going to go up under. So I've got to make it stick out and go under. V-Tool is one way of doing it. I don't I do not do those on a V-Tool because I want this really sharp and crispy. Go right along, go right along the side there. Are you going to come out? And I'm going to just come back in, make a cut here, and take out that part right right there. So I, I tucked it in. I'm going to take that off right there. And that's one ear or tail or whatever you call it of that collar. I want to cut it in, then I want to cut it down, but I've got to figure out where that tie is going to be. And so I'm not going to cut the inside part right here because there's a tie going to be here. I've gone too far now before, so I can't do a bow tie. There's just not enough room. And so what I'm going to do is do this other side. In. Trim it up here, the side of the jacket. And then we come back in with the point of the knife. Take out that piece right there. So that's the outside. I don't know what you call these ears, flaps, lapels, whatever. That's the, the tails of the shirt. Now I'm going to take off a little bit at an angle back in there, right at, right at that head. I want to lay it back down. I don't want it coming straight up to his chin. I want it come come up and then curve into the chin. In other words, make it to where it's not as flat. Straight in, just like that. Now, do we want to tie any, meeny, miny, mo? I don't know. We'll, we'll try it. Here's the shirt, uh, the collar, tie. Ties a diamond shape in there, the, the head of the tie. And then, since I like fat ties and they're making a comeback, my wife says, I'm going to give them a fat tie. Okay, right there at that at where that shirt is, the collar of the shirt, I want to make a small V cut in there, not very deep, just enough to show that it lies above what's, what's behind it. So you see where I just made that cut right there? These cuts right there. Now I want to shape that head, so I'm going to cut in that diamond shape at the bottom of the collar. Hard to see, I realize that. And then now I'm going to shape out the rest of the tie. There's a tie. Sorry, I didn't mean to jack that camera around. So you can see and try to get some of the glare off of it. All right, we don't have to do a whole lot to this because we just want to give it the impression. But I do want to leave a few shadows. So I'm going to make a stop cut right down in that groove. And I'm going to take a little bit of this out, just flatten that sliver out to the side of it with your knife up under that tie, and it gives it a shadow. See a little bit of those shadows under there? Right there. Same thing on the other side. Oh, my.
Spaß. Do the same thing around the head of the tie. I just want to remove a little bit of a sliver so that it looks like it fades up underneath it. Sometimes that's all it takes. I think the trigs of, from Sweden and California were the experts at that. They just took out a little bit of sliver, gave you the impression that it went under it. It really didn't, but it did. And that was all they needed to give was just that impression. And, you know, they were successful. They sold thousands and thousands of carvings, and I have a half a dozen or more in my collection in here. But sometimes you want to look at flat plane. Go look at their stuff. You'll see how with an economy of motion, an economy of cuts, here I am spending 14 cuts to get out a little chip, they could do it in two. They just, uh, they were just masters at it. And an entire family of, of carvers who knew how to get what they got with mostly just a knife and a, and a piece of wood. And you enjoy seeing that kind of stuff because even if they weren't masters like Rembrandt, they were masters in their own medium and in their own way. And you just got to look at that thinking, oh, wow. If all of us could be that way, this, you know, wouldn't be quite so hard, but we're not all that way. All right. I like the way he's looking. A few more details, a few more cleanups here and there. And we'll, uh, we're just about to have him done. Another little bit. So spend a little bit of time just cleaning up. I'll yammer on if you want me to, and I'll shut up if you want me to. Take a few minutes to clean it up. One of the things I like to do is take a small gouge. I have a couple small gouges. I just bought a real small one the other day. A little small gouge like these. This is about, I want to say, a quarter inch across. Thing stuck down there. And so I just go around to all these lines. I just clean them up as deep or as shallow as I need to but anytime especially if there's a transition like between a jacket and a shirt it's really nice to clean that up because we've always got fuzzies in there and you look at your you look at your carving and you'll see them and sometimes it's easier to leave them sometimes you can use a particular tool on them and sometimes, you know what? We just don't care. We're done. And so we just leave it there. I like to come in here and at least get the obvious ones in there. You know, like right here. Here's one. Right there. Come on, focus. I'm trying to focus on this, this part right here. See that chewed up right there? See it? I want to try to get that out of there. So I just come in here with my knife, cut down into it and across. And it looks a whole lot better. And those little things like that, those are the ones that we, we should be watching out for because we want to make sure that we're doing the obvious stuff. Now, obviously, you know, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, like they said. But the things we can do, that's what we ought to be doing. Those are the things that if you're a seller, if, you're a car, if you sell carvings, those are the things that people enjoy take not seeing. They don't want all those little fuzzies. It raises the price on it, raises the interest in it, if nothing else. And if you're doing it for show, if you're doing it for competition, those are the things that judges ding you on. You may have the most wonderful project in the world, and a good judge, not all of them, some of them get wowed by the wow factor, but a good one will look at the whole detail because of, of the things you're carving, the criteria they're judging you against is creativity being one, how creative is your carving, uh, being uh, finished is in terms of are you done with it? That's what they look at. What kind of finish did you put on it? Did you put a glossy finish when it doesn't call for one? Did you um, take care of the attention to details, the things that cause some people 
to mark down a carving just because they have those little fuzzies. And so I don't know where you're at in your carving career, whether you're you're entering or just going to show or going to look. Um, I haven't entered in quite a while. I entered in the CCA last, uh, not last year, the year before. And um, I don't I don't like entering, especially in our local show, because if I win, one of my friends didn't win because it's mostly our, our club. But I'm not judging this year, so I may enter pieces since we get to do them for free. Here you got five. Your first five carvings are free. And then after that, they're $5 a piece. We're trying to generate interest in getting people in the door. I'll be switched if I can't find a tool I'm looking for down here. Anyway, we're trying to get more people in the door this year, and hopefully it'll work. We don't know that it will. We just know that we um, we dropped down last year quite a bit from previous shows. We were down to only 900, I don't know, 930, I think we had, of entries. And probably a lot of that was, was COVID, whatever. But um, we're trying to, to get more people to enter the show because it's about showing off and not winning a ribbon. And I win another ribbon, it goes on the wall. It goes in a box, whatever, because I don't really I don't really do this for ribbons or accolations. I don't, I don't really care. I, I like to do this because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy people seeing it. I enjoyed it when I was growing up. I enjoyed it when I wasn't in carving. And so I'm, 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 I want to show other people what that looks like and what it is. And I do a lot of demos. I do demos and classes and a lot of people see my carvings. And so I'm proud of that, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it just for a ribbon. We've had people in the past at our club meeting, we come up with all the carvings they've been doing. Would this win a ribbon? Would this win a ribbon? And you go, you know what? It's not all about ribbons. Did you enjoy doing it? That's the most important thing. If you don't enjoy doing it, then why are you doing it? Because if you're doing it just for winning a ribbon, I know most of the places don't even, well, some places don't even have um, a tag on the back that tells you what it was for. you got to kind of fill that in on your own. And so if you're doing it for somebody else's idea of what you should be doing, um, I'm sorry, maybe you're doing it for the wrong thing. If it's all about recognition, it probably won't be very fun. Just, just saying. Because you, now you're trying to meet an arbitrary set of rules that somebody is going to judge arbitrarily. Um, I don't know how many times I've had per we had, we had a, we had a case this year, and, and this is a little bit different, but not quite. We had uh, in in the hobby craft, which is where they they label the the carvings, hobby craft, and give us the total of eight categories for professional, eight categories for amateur. And so, not on the carving side, not in the carving thing, but in the model making thing, which is where they put they put our model in hobby or hobby craft. There was a, a, a thing that won first place. And another one looked like a bridge, looked like a medieval bridge, won third place in its category. But it won best of show. If it couldn't win its own category, why did it win best of show? Well, the argument was, well, the judge who judged best of show wasn't the judge who judged the carving. Yes, but again, I don't understand it. I don't really care because I didn't enter this year. But you just go judging is so subjective and that's one of the things you have to look at i've seen national competitions where the one that won first place was this god-awful mess i mean i looked at it i showed pictures of it to other people and you go how did that win first place look at this part look at that part look at what's wrong here and look at what's wrong there i saw a carving of of a woman somebody had done in curlers and you understand it's going to be a little rough because, you know, she just got up. She ain't going to look like no beauty queen. But the toes were broken off. You know how you carve and wood breaks on you and you have these lines of, of, of cells growing along the tree? This thing had, that I saw, in my opinion, and again, I'm just judging it 
on my own opinion, but I didn't think it was the best show in the in the competition. And, and, and I see that a lot where people say, why did this win and that one didn't, or this one got higher than that? Well, you got to realize who's doing it. It's humans. We humans are looking at that and we're judging it differently and we're all looking at it and you just get at some point it's like when you donate a carving or something to a raffle or to an auction and it goes for a hundred bucks and you thought it should be worth 300 well you gave it away so you can't really say anything about how what it sold for you put that thing in to be judged so you, which means i'm open for criticism bring it on and at some point that's just the way it is and if you're not comfortable with that then you probably ought not be entering in a show where someone's going to criticize your work to some degree. Have I said enough for my soapbox? Am I done? <laughs> Should I be done? Nobody's saying anything against me or, or for me or agreeing with me, so. I don't know who did that song. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Right or wrong. Having said that, I will be entering some things into our show in April. If anybody gets a chance to come up to Boise April 5th, 6th, and 7th, 5th is the, the day of the, the judging and the, and the competition, and the rest of the weekend is all showing the, showing the, all the entries that were put in there. If you come by, swing by the carving table and say hello to me. I'll be there. Love to see you there. April 5th, 6th, and 7th, 2023. All right. I realize we are done with the body of this. Nope. I still got this part to take care of. So let me yammer on a little bit more about something. April 5th, 6th, and 7th. We feel like we've got most of our snow out of the year already because we got like 12 inches in a row. And then we had one inch on Saturday, and two days before that, it was 62 degrees. So maybe coming up here in April, depending on where you're traveling from, might be a long drive, might be bad weather. I hope not, because bad weather really kills our attendance, but we'll see. We'll see. That's when everybody to be safe. Show don't matter when it comes to being safe. So, all right. Just about, we got that done. I can't see a whole lot other than the little details here and there and different angles that we can clean up. What we have left is the head. Oh no, we got to carve eyes. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to just do him where squinty eyed, or if you want to put a pair of sunglasses on him, you can. Maybe we ought to have a, maybe we ought to have a class on how to make glasses. I've made a few and I am no expert. I'm fascinated with these people who can carve it all out of the wood. You know, the whole head and face and everything in glasses is all made out of the same piece of wood. I'm fascinated by that. I wish somebody would teach me how to do that. I might, have to, I might have to take a class, but anyway, I got a head. We've got it mostly shaped the way we want it. So now what we've got to do is Check chat. Well, good. Nobody said anything in the chat. All right. You said something in the chat. I'm sorry. I didn't get there. All right. We've got a head where we've got the nose and the snout. And we've got the eye mound here, which doesn't have to be big, depending on the type of bear you're looking at. Top of the head and the ears. These are fairly easy things to take care of, if you ask me. I'm going to take a V-tool, not a very big one. I want to carve up the side of the nose, take a big, well, not big comparatively, but take a few chips out of there and across the bottom. What I'm trying to do is get that nose to stick out a little bit. So I've cut it in just like that. So now I'm going to come up here with a knife. And I'm going to trim up to those notches that I cut on each side. Six that nose out a little bit. 
I want to trim that mouth to come to it. I don't want the, the nose to be out here and the mouth to be out at the same angle. Mouth mound. So I'm just going to come up the side and angle in towards that. Coming up the side of the face, angling in towards the side of that nose. Do the same thing over here. Measure if you need to. Eyeball how much of it you're taking off on one side because you want the other side to be somewhat symmetrical. It don't have to be perfect, but you want it to stick out a little bit, a little bit on both sides, about the same amount. Careful, because it's easy. Pop that nose off. So what we've done is we've carved up this side. You see that flat plane? You carved up that side. So we're trying to shape that mouth a little bit. We're going to come in and do a little bit more because we want it not to be flat on that on that snout. Only across the top will we worry about it being flat. So you can see how we're taking that off. Where are you at? Right over here, we're taking more off. Okay, do the same over here. Take off those those sharp edges, those sharp corners. Cut off the bottom of it. We're gonna round this here in just a minute. But we want to put it in there as far as the structure of it, the shape of it, and then we want to come back and add the details to it. So I am recording, and I'll do my best to get that up as soon as I can. I'm not sure if we keep doing this all the time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna record it because I think what's happening is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of us, seven of us. I think people are staying away, and it might have something to do with the time. People are staying away because they can catch it on on YouTube. So I think that's and, and that's. Moving forward towards a subscription fee, if that's what we're gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't want people recording it and then you know allowing other people to, to, to view it if they've not been, if they've not paid the subscription fee. I don't mean to make it all about money, but I gotta. I'm trying to build a business here, and I'm, I'd like to continue bringing classes at a low cost rather than having to spend two, three hundred dollars on on uh, wood carving academy so i'm not planning on doing real high-end fancy carvings you know i see the latest dave stetson where he's sitting on the floor the carving guy is sitting on the floor and he's got one leg raised up and the other on the arm across it it's a real complex one i don't plan on doing that because i don't think that's a a, a, a good one for me to teach online i don't know that i would be very good at it at teaching complex things like that in in a in an online setting very well. And maybe after I practice it, we'll see. But um, I'm I'm planning on keeping my stuff somewhere around intermediate, higher higher beginner um, to middle upper intermediate. In other words, what what most of us can carve when we go to take a class. Um, you probably stretch. You might, maybe if you're like me, you stretch stuff a little bit sometimes. But we'll see if we'll see what we can do on that. I'm hoping, hoping we can, but I want to make sure that it's it's fair. If you paid your subscription fee for the month, somebody else isn't getting it for free. So, so I'm rounding the back of the head. I'm sorry, I was off camera. Just rounding the back of that head a little bit, and we've got the face coming down. Again, I don't, I'm not looking at. I got a book over here that's got a lot of bear images, bear carvings, bear cartoons, bear pictures, just to try to get an idea of what a picture, what it looks like. And one lady yesterday said, oh, I like your dog. She was looking at this fella here. I guess if you, I don't know, maybe it looks like a dog. I think the, the head's too fat for a dog and the ears are too small. 
But I had to correct her that it was a bear. Not that she knew. That's the first time she'd ever seen it. But I don't want my things to look like a comic bear, and I don't want them to look like um, Yogi Bear. But I want them to look a little bit, I don't know, maybe you could argue that they look teddy bear, but I don't do a lot of bears, but I do some, and I like the ones that I do, and, and, and you know, it's like that. So, all right. We've got a little bit under the chin here. We might get done. I don't know that we'll get done in time to paint. Maybe we'll save painting for next time. Trim under that chin a little bit. And I don't usually put a lot of hair on my bears. I don't really care to sit here and, and tool all the hair for the bear, mainly because it's kind of like chip carving, if you've ever done chip carving. It's got to be perfect, or somebody will pick out the one flaw. You may only have one flaw in there. Somebody will pick that out. And then you go, well, what did I do this for then, if they're going to pick it apart? So I don't really want to do a lot of tooling on the bear. Let's see if that will focus. I don't want to do a lot of tooling on the bear, but I want to do some. So now what I've got left is the head and any details I wanted to add in. So we'll, we'll work on this head. Somewhere around here, I'm going to have, I'm going to have eyes in there. I want to flatten this just a little bit more. So I'm going to come back in here with my fishtail gouge. And all I'm going to do is angle that head snout back a little bit more. All I'm doing is carving straight back from the nose. And then rounding the edges of that, and rounding the edges of that. So I come back in here and clean it up with my gouge. I'll take a V tool and right across the, the eye mount and the snout, just clean it up a little bit. So I've left myself some room in there to do the eyes. Well, that's awful light, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna draw a center line right down the center where the where the the eyes are. And sometimes I connect the eyes where they're stuck together, and sometimes I separate them. And I think on this one, I'm just gonna separate them. I don't want the eyes of my bear looking very fierce. So can you see that? Turn the light off to see if it might help a little bit. There we go. That might be a little bit better. Get it up here closer. You see that I've got just regular shaped eyes, not anything real fancy. Okay, I'm going to outline it in black so you can see it a little bit better. Maybe I'll see it a little bit better too. And I've got my center line. And I've got one eye up here. And I've got one eye over here. Get an idea of what they're going to look like. Okay. Small V tool. Don't need to be big. Small one looks about right. That 47 that I started with earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle, top middle, not right in the middle, I'm in the middle of the eye. And I'm going to go around and carve that out. And do that same thing. I don't want real deep lines here because they're going to look like the bear is scared. Eyes are wide open. There's one eye. Hold still. And then the other one. Go up here. Carve down to the middle. Or middle. 
carved to the outside. Hard to see uh, with the light the way it is, but it looks a little better. And I'm going to clean it up a little bit because I'm going to flatten those eyes to the outside, but it'll still give me the indentation of the round and roundness of the eyes because I want to round them and then flatten them. I'm going to round them and then I'm going to flatten them to the bottom, which I didn't carve across the bottom with the small V tool. No big deal. Okay, now get a pointed knife, and I'm just going to stop cut right in there. Not real deep. Don't go real deep, because otherwise you'll end up with a bear with his eyes looking like he just got scared by a mouse or whatever, it's, whatever it is that scares bears. Okay, I cut around, stop cut it. Now all I'm going to do is come up from the bottom in the corners. Corners first, take out those little chips in the corners. Don't need to take out much. Okay. And then I want to carve up to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the top of the eyelid. Do bears have eyelids? I think they do. I'm not a bear expert. down in those corners well I like those it came out pretty good the wood was chipping away a little bit I mean I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to pull that off but I think it looks pretty good let me switch cameras and see if we can get a better angle that way Nose is still square. I don't have a bulge between the eyes, and I don't have a lot of separation between the ears. But I'll, I'm gonna, I'll fix that here in just a second. We'll take off that. Take off that sharp edge on the nose. Cut his nose a little crookedy there. All right. Cut his nose squared away. Take off the lines on the front of the mouth. And we're going to carve down at an angle, a little bit of an angle, to bring that snout in from a wide head. See what I did? I took off this part right here, almost like cheekbones. If we were doing this on a cowboy, we'd call it a cheek. We'd bring his cheekbones in. Okay. I want to go right between the eyes with a gouge, a small one, and I want to just carve up so it will separate those eyes without separating them. See that right there? Okay, I want to do the same thing between the ears. I want to separate those ears just a little bit more. i got to be careful because I don't want to take a lot of the ear off. But I want to take some of it. Okay, can you see that ear separation now? All right. I'm going to take a gouge about this size. This is the bigger one. 
I want to say this is a number nine, and I want to say it's about three eighths. I don't know for sure. But what that's going to do is allow me to go right in here at the ear and go in and curve to me. Curve to me doesn't mean push back. So when I come in, I want to curve and cut out rather than come in and push. So if I went in and push back right here, I'm going to break off that ear. And so what I want to do is come in. And I want to cut a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, moving my knife from side to side as I go. And then I'll come back here with my knife. And I cut that off. There's hair in there. There's stuff in there I want to cut off. See how that popped out? That chip popped out. Go back in here and do it again and again and again as not much as I need to do. I want to cut, not prod, not poke, not pull. I want to cut. If I cut, I'll get a clean cut in there. If I pull, push, and prod, I'm going to break something off. Taking off these marks that I put on there, it'll be easier to see the ear when we get it done that way. Be careful because in some places it'll come right off, other places it'll split off. You just be careful. So there's one ear. I cut out the other. off inside there those don't want to come out of there like them others did so we're going to have to convince them we'll come with a bigger knife and that'll scare them a little bit right here so he's got lips I guess kind of not much I usually do that with a bigger v-tool I don't know why I didn't reach for that but right in that mouth right there got my finger up under my chin again you can't see that can you Okay. Now a lot of a lot of bears. What I like to do is bring that mouth over to here, and bring that mouth over to here, and then up around to the snout. And as you can see on my carvings, like that. See how I brought that bottom up. Bring this bottom up here underneath the nose and bring that up around here and you can color that any color you want that's black with a brown snout here's another black one with a brown snout here's a black one that's black snout. Uh, in any way you want to do it is entirely up to you now the only thing I have left on this fella is adding details and so I would I would go in here and I would put right in here some wrinkles. These are his pants. So right in there where the pants are, there'd be some wrinkles in there. I'd put a few more wrinkles in here on the front of his pants and decide whether he wants a zippered fly or if you just want nothing there. I'd detail the heels of the shoes. So I'd add a heel in. Add a heel in and then trace around the sole and make that 
the separation between the sole and the heel right in there. I'd add a few more. I'd, I'd smooth a little bit more of this back. And what else would I need to do? Other than that, I think we're, we're pretty much done with that. One of the things I do, other, other than going around with that little V tool that I talked about using, here's what I finish mine with. I was asked and then challenged in a class that I gave the other day. I was doing a, I was doing a carving class, and, and one of the things they asked was, "Well, do you ever do do you ever use sandpaper?" Yes and no. Uh, sandpaper is one of those things where it's a slippery slope. So if I start out, I have this guy, and I want to put some sandpaper to him. Do you know what number I would start at? All of us know sandpaper, right? The, the lower the number, the 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 bigger the particles are, and the fewer there are per square inch. So 60 grit has 60 pieces of grit for every square inch. 2,000, you couldn't fit 2,000 of those same particles in a 2,000 in a square inch on a 2,000 sand 2,000 grit sandpaper. So the particles have to be much smaller. The smaller they are, the less that they sand. The smoother that they sand. So I couldn't start with 60. I would leave marks all over the place. 80, 100, 120, maybe. Still going to leave marks. I'd probably be somewhere around 200, 220 to start with. That's a fine. What that means is that if you're going to sand it with sandpaper, you're going to be sanding for quite a while. One of the things you can use uh, if you're worried about getting, okay, so I get through carving and I realize, oh, I missed something and I'm, I've already sanded it. Well, if I start putting sandpaper to the wood, it's going to leave some of those particles all over this. And now I'm going to go back to the wood to carve it with my knife again because I missed the spot. Those sand particles scratch up your, your, your metal. I'm not saying not to use sandpaper. There's times when I do it, especially if, I can, if it's a base or something like that. That works. The other thing that they've got right now is called Abernet. And it is a 30, it comes in, in Woodcraft, it comes in a 30, a 10 sheet package, but it's $31. It's metal sandpaper it doesn't clog up it has mesh it's mesh what it is, what it is it doesn't clog up and doesn't and whatever comes off of the metal goes off of the paper and doesn't stay on your on your wood very much what i like to do is use scotch bright pads i didn't know if i had any laying around here but what i do is i put them on a little mandrel and you may have heard me talk about this before but the mandrel has a screw right in the middle little tiny screw and I'll cut these things in one inch squares, pile three of them on there, poke that screw through it, and then screw it onto the mandrel. And I spin it in my, my Dremel. I don't even know the speed. I want to say medium because it goes a lot faster. And I don't want to say slow because it goes a lot slower. Somewhere in the middle where it's not going to be so strong that it whips this out of your hand. The smaller the thing you're using, the more that wants to grab and flip it out of your hand. And if it's fragile, it's going to break. But I use these a lot because mostly what it does is get rid of fuzzies, the stuff that's just loose and hanging around. It doesn't sand your stuff, it burnishes it. Sanding is going to leave scratch marks. Burnish it is going to seal that wood back up. That's what I like to do. I know people like Pat Moore will take a piece of that, small piece of the white color. I like the red because it's aggressive enough to take off the fuzzies. Uh, the white is more of a burnishing thing. She in her, in her class, she'll give you a square of the white. You buff it as much as you want, and then they spray a layer of lacquer on it. And then when that dries, you spray it down. You rub it down again with that piece of piece of paper, and that brings it to a really smooth surface for you to paint. Again, it is your choice on what you do. I am not here to tell you what to do. I will gladly show you how I do what I do. And I am more than happy. I'm ecstatic to teach people. I love teaching people. I've been doing it for a long time. And I love sitting in front of people and passing on the knowledge that I got from somebody else because I'm not arrogant enough to say I came up with this on my own. I ain't that smart. I'm smart aleck, but I ain't that smart. And so I really enjoy being able to teach and being able to help and being able to make a difference. If, if I'm on this earth to make a difference, then why am I taking every opportunity I can to do it? So I will do what I can to help you. Anyway, we're done with this guy. If you'd like, I'll paint him the next time. Uh, if, you, if not, we'll move on to some other project. So we got about 15 minutes, 12, 15 minutes left. Anybody want to 
jump in and give me some ideas of some of the things you would like to do in class you'd like to see a class on realizing we're doing it for two hours at a time probably and right now nothing's changing it may change down the road i would i would like to make a, a bolo figure a figure um, or just a just you mean a like bolo. a bolo like boy scouts wear yeah yeah I have about a hundred and something of these left. Here's a here's here's a handful I just reached over and grabbed. There's a, a gnome. I've, I've seen that video. Oh, have you? Yeah. That's um Scott. I thought that, that was neat. Right. So you're talking about something like this? Yes. Okay. Um, anybody else? You already know what I want. No, tell me again, Tommy. The Santa that you showed us your study board of. Godway Santa is what I call him. Say that again. It you you showed us your progression stick on your uh, Santa. Well, it was up here. I don't see it right now, but I, I know it's from the Tom, the Tomte Santa. Looks like he's walking, like he's walking right. away. Right. Relief. Okay, gotcha. I'll write that one down. I'll write Peter's down. Anybody else? Throw out ideas, I guess, and see what what sticks, what doesn't. Did you get leprechaun? No, I was looking at a leprechaun carving yesterday, and I thought that looks pretty good. And then some guy on Facebook or Instagram, can't remember which one. He's, um, I think he's from Ireland, maybe from Wales. He, that's what he does. All of his carvings that I saw were things like leprechauns and and you know the little the little figures that you see in in the British in, in the United Kingdom, things like that. I'll add that one to it. Anything else? Because if you don't tell me what you want, you got to listen to what I'm going to do. Cowboy. Or cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, okay, that's an idea. What I, let me see. Hang on. I got one right here. I got a class called the Generic Cowboy, and everything that you do comes from here. I've got a box okay. somewhere. I can't remember where it's at, but it's got probably a dozen cowboys in there. And, it, and I took a picture of it, put it on my Instagram at one time. But you can see there's the side of the cowboy. Head up here, belly, hands right here, feet. There's the front. So you got a head and there's room to get a cowboy hat in there. Believe it or not, it's two inch. You got the body and you got the legs. I've got some of them with the legs cut out, some of them with the legs not cut out. If I don't cut the legs out, then you can do a cowboy with a long duster or you could do a wizard. Once I cut the legs out, you know, you, you got your, you're limited to what you can do on that. But a generic cowboy, that would probably be six classes, maybe 12 hours, roughly They're broken up every once in a while. An, an idea, something to think about. I'll put that on there, generic cowboy. I also have from the same, almost the same block. Give me just a second. So you can see. These are two different classes, but they're the exact same block. Okay. So if we did one of those from that, you could do pool player. For those of you that like pool, um, angry skier because he broke his leg. All of this from the same block. Um, Astronaut. 
So love all of that. I love the astronaut. I do too. That one was fun to do. And I've got a whole bunch more in here, but I'll, I'll show you later. Anyway, those. We could do the cowboy. Or we could do the, the generic figure, all from these ones. So that's an idea with do the generic figure, do the generic cowboy. We ever, that way you've got the freedom to do what you want to do. And I can help you along the way. You can either follow along with what I'm going to do or follow along with what you're going to want to do while we do it. Any other ideas out there? I'm listening. All right, let me, where's my notebook? Here's some that I've talked about. Um, the question is how deep and how much we're moving toward the upper intermediate. So if we did a fireman bottle stopper, I did that one time. We did the fireman head and then put the head inside of a hydrant. That was, way, that was the way it was stored when you weren't using it as a bottle stopper. Um, where do you put it in? So you have a head, you have a bottle stopper. You know what I'm talking about? Bottle stopper, hang on. You know, just a generic cowboy bottle stopper. But if we turned that into a firefighter, then when you weren't using this in a bottle, where would you store it? Just lay it on the shelf? Well, that's not what it's meant for. You'd put that inside a, uh, if it's a firefighter, you'd put that inside a fire hydrant. Just, you know uh, it's, where the, it's where the firemen plug their hose in for water. Okay, okay. Hydrant. I've got things like shelf sitters where the beard hangs over the edge of the shelf and the, yes. the head sits above. Um, flat plane dog, for those of you that are interested in flat plane. I've got, uh, I like bark faces, bark houses. Yeah, but I can't. Huh? I don't have uh, bark wood. You don't, oh yeah, I don't know that you could get any, could you? Couldn't ship you some. Unless we didn't tell them what it was, <laughs> we lied to them. I don't think that'd go over very well for you, would it? I've got things like um, a walking cowboy with a rifle. I don't know if I can get him down without moving everything, but he's just walking, and over one shoulder he's got his rifle. Like he's he's headed towards trouble. I got a lot of. I mean, I've got a. I've got a lot of ideas. At some point, you know, I have to decide whether that's going to be a free class or a subscription class. So if you pay the subscription, whatever we do that month, it's one price. You don't have to pay a membership fee, then have to pay a class fee. Because I think that's what Wood Carving Academy does. You pay a monthly fee and then you get, if you want to see Ryan's class, you got to pay the 195 or whatever it is. 95. 95 for that how many days was it two days uh, four days four days 95 dollars not bad not a bad price if you got the time to do it so anyway um i'll paint this by next week and then or by the two weeks from today the four the 21st um yeah i'll paint this bear up i've got it well i got plenty of bears all right I'll finish this one up, and then I'll have. Uh, do you want do you want to see me paint or no? Do you know how to paint or is it no big deal? 
I'll go along with what everybody else wants. I love that too. You'll, you'll go with whatever. Okay, so the, the rest of you, any idea? Care? I don't see anything in the chat. Nobody saying anything. I don't know how many are left. Huh? I don't know how many are here, but still. One, two, three, four, five, and then you and you and uh, Tommy and me. So seven people. All right. I'll uh, I'll plan on painting this one. I'll do all the finishing that I do on a on a normal carving, and I'll explain that before I paint it. I'll go through and show you what I what I did so that we know what it looks like and what it what it took, and then we'll do. How about we do a cowboy bottle stopper? Okay. And if I would love that. That'll take maybe two sessions to paint it and do that. And then at that time, if you like, we'll do a fireman bottle stopper. I was gonna do a I was gonna do a Swedish yes. chef from Muppets, but we'll we'll see how that goes. Go ahead. Love that. Huh? If you like that Swedish chef, it's all right with me too. Okay. I think all that's right. Yvonne trying to talk. Is it? Like, oh, she's got. She, she she's loves got, cowboys. Oh, does she? Well, we'll do that one. We'll do a cowboy, and then if we want to, we'll go right into a a, a fireman after that, and then the, the bottle, the the fire hydrant to hold it in place. You know, to, to store it when it's not being used, and then we'll look at here sometime in the next couple of weeks next couple of months doing a generic cowboy or a generic figure so we'll have to make the decision whether everybody's going to do the same thing or everybody's going to do whatever they want to do but uh, we'll do that make it hard on you wouldn't it? i just keep two of them going when i do a class and i did a class um a couple two or three weeks ago and it was getting ready for valentine's and so we um no wait a minute that's another another class we were working on a pine tree They're just making a small, you know, four inch pine tree. And I have, whenever, whenever I set people down, I, you know, two to a table, I have one that I'm working on at their table. So if I got five tables, I've got five of them I'm working on at the same time. So I go from place to place to see where they are, show them the next step and then move on to the next table. So I don't, you know, you've been in classes with some people where they'll sit and talk to somebody for five, 10 minutes. And you, you, they get around to you, and you get two minutes. So right. it really, aggra really aggravates some people. So I try to keep it equitable. Okay, I'm gonna spend five minutes here explaining what, explaining, critiquing what you've done so far, you know, what you did right, what you did that you could do better, and then what the next step of what you're supposed to be doing is. And so that would be, that would be what I do. Yes, it's more work for me. Because if I only have one that I'm working on and I show it to table number one, I can't show that step to table number two or three or four or five. So I try to keep one in front of everybody at their table so that they see what I'm doing. You know what that means? That means when I get done and I've got that box full of those carvings and the blanks left, I got five or six more in there. I got to finish or otherwise they're going to yeah. sit there. And run with me. So it's a lot of work, but you know, for me, one of the things I learned about teaching was I can show you and you, you might remember, but if I make you do it, you're going to understand it. So if I show you how to do a cut, now maybe you know how to do it, but if I'm, I show you how to do that cut and then you do it while I'm watching and while I'm, while I'm helping you, it makes so much more sense that way. And so I've always tried to get my students involved in what I'm doing. If not, if not, at least explaining very well how what I'm doing. The only way I know how to teach. Okay. Any other suggestions? All righty, then. I will see you on the 21st, two weeks from today. Thank Drive you. Some, be careful. Thank you. Good to see you all. Invite your friends. Get some people to come on over and we'll have fun. I do. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.